Welcome to Introduction to Procedural Asset Creation, Lesson 7. So in the last lesson, we built up and imported our procedural skate park ramp into Unity. And now what we want to do is we want to uh, start to embellish upon this and add new features. And most notably, we want to add some actual materials to this. Just so we can uh, look into the process of assigning materials dynamically with Substance and Houdini. All right, so I'm going to switch over here to Substance, where I have the Substance that I created for the previous ramp already created. And we're going to actually create a new package. So what I want to do is create a new package, and I want to add a new graph to it. So I'm going to say New Graph. And you'll get the New Graph window pop up here inside of Substance Designer 4. Now, if you aren't familiar with using Substance Designer 4, I'd recommend watching the intro to Substance Designer on Game Tutor. All right, so I'm going to give this new uh, substance a name. I'm going to call this the ramp plywood. All right, now this is very important, as you'll see in the uh, coming steps here. I'm going to make it relative to parent and hit OK. All right, so that gives me a brand new graph with all my outputs already set up. So I have my diffuse, my normal, and my specular already set. OK, so now what I want to do is I want to import a texture I can use for the wood. So I'm going to import a bitmap. Actually, first, what I want to do is create a folder. And this is going to be where I store all of my textures. So I'm going to import the bitmap. So I'm going to just pull in a plywood texture here. All right. And I want to put that into my graph. <clears throat> so I just click and drag it into the graph. And now right off the bat, uh, we get a texture that is set to 1024 by 1024. Now I want to make this relative to the parent so it's dynamic and it can size with the actual size of the substance that we set inside of Unity. So I'm going to set it to relative to parent over here for the output size. Alrighty, now that sets it to whatever the parent graph is set to right here. All right. So the next thing we need to do is just make this tileable. Currently, it's not tileable because we get a whole bunch of color shifts. All right, so inside of Designer, what we can do is we can uh, do some adjustments. So here, what I want to do is use the uh, lighting cancel low frequencies. So I'm just going to pipe that in. Now I'm going to kind of roll through this pretty quickly as it's not really meant to be, as this course isn't really meant to be a substance course. It's more about getting the whole pipeline understood um, so that way we are productive in our procedural workflows. Okay. So we put in a lighting lo cancel, low frequencies, and I, I want to make sure this tiles. So I'm going to drop out a make a tile photo node. All right. So once I do that, you'll notice that now our wood texture totally tiles, and that's good. So let's pump that into our diffuse. All righty. <clears throat> very, very good. All right. So then what we can do is we can actually utilize this for our normal map as well. So if I feed this into a normal map node, that's going to go out to my normal, like so. And we can also then drop down an HSL node, feed the final color there that would out to our specular. That way we get a little bit of specular here and some controls to play with the actual specular. <clears throat> All right. So that's pretty good. The last thing I want to do, I, I, I also want to just give us some parameters to play with. So what I'm going to do is actually drag out a directional noise here. Alrighty. And this directional noise will determine where we have paint and where we don't have paint. So I need some paint color. And then I need a blend node. And I'm going to just blend these two guys together there, the wood and the, the paint color, using this blend node like that. All right. And what I can do to make it feel a little bit more like paint is actually give it some levels so I can clamp those values there. Like so. Do something like that. <clears throat> and let's give it a little bit more interesting color for the paint color. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then let's take care of our uh, specular here. So I'm going to feed that final output there. Alrighty. And now I, I want to make the uh, paint a little bit more um, specular than the actual wood. So what I can do here is I can saturate this down a little bit. 
to black and white, and I'm going to need to invert it, so I'm going to drop down a levels node. We'll invert this whole thing here. Alrighty, and we can just clamp those values so that we get specular just in the paint areas. Alright, nothing crazy. Just something simple for now. Alrighty, so then I can also blend together, make some normals for the actual paint itself, just to give it a little bit of bump. Alrighty, and then I will blend these two together. So I'm going to blend that, and that's going to be my background. That's going to be my foreground. And now we have a normal map that has paint in it. There we go. So now we get a little bit of play of the actual paint on the surface of our wood. Alrighty. Okay, so inside of Substance, if you want to expose any sort of value so that we can edit it directly inside of Unity, we just need to expose the color like so. So I'm going to call this paint color. Alrighty. And we can also expose the uh, normal intensities. You can expose anything actually. So I'm just going to set up some <clears throat> simple parameters here. So paint normal intensity. And maybe we want to actually drive how much paint we have on our particular surface here. So I can actually pull it away or bring it back, vice versa. All right, so what we need to do is set up a, a parameter for this low level. So I'm going to switch my levels over to values and expose my levels low. So I'm going to expect this, expose this, and I'm going to call this paint um, damage. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now we have a new substance file. So what I want to do is call this um, the I'm just going to call this the video ramp SBS file. All right, so now I've saved that. I've exposed all my parameters. So then in my paint damage, what I want to do is clamp it so that we can't over blow it there like that. All right, everything else should be fine. Cool. So we need one more graph inside of our substance here. So I'm going to create a new graph. And this new graph is going to be called the outline color. Again, we're going to make it relative to parent. Say OK. All right. So for this graph, we just need a color just for, for now. So this color is going to be our outline color. All righty. So that's going to be our diffuse. And then we need to just give it some regular normals. So there we go. And just pump that into specularity like so. All righty. And that's all we need to do for that. I'm going to save my package there and then I want to publish it. So let's publish this. I'm going to call it video ramp. Again, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. So video ramp.sbar. And that's the file that we bring into Unity. So if I come into Unity here and I will put this new substance into my resources folder. So I'm going to import a new asset from my desktop here. Import that video ramp and now we have our two substances. So now I'm just going to change that paint color a little bit there. <clears throat> so now what we need to do is we need to get it so that when we drop in a new ramp, one of these new simple ramps, the materials are automatically hooked up for us. So to do that, we actually need to go into Houdini and set up a few more parameters for our procedural assets. So I'm going to go back into Houdini here and let's actually start doing that. So to add on to our graph, I need to make our node editable. So I'm going to right click on this node and say allow editing of contents. I'm going to open this up, and now what we need to do is start to figure out how to make normal assignments, or I mean material assignments. Alrighty. So, to do that, we need to start to group our geometry into very specific groups. And thankfully, we've set our graph up so that we can do that relatively easy. So, here we have all of our outline geometry. So, I just need to drop down a new group node, like so. And I'm going to call this the outline group, or GRP for short. And let's just use that same name for the group name. And all the defaults are fine. And we'll just make sure that that is included in, the, in that graph there. And we have to do the same thing for the wood. So I'm going to come over here. This is going to be our wood group. 
already. Copy that off, paste that in for the group name, because we can actually use these group names um, to create attributes that sit on the geometry itself, so that when this particular OTL or procedural asset gets imported into Unity, Unity can read those attributes and decide which materials to actually throw onto uh, the procedural asset. Okay, so. Now that we've got our groups set up, you'll notice that if we um, middle mouse click on any of these nodes here, we have an outline group and a wood group. And if we come down to our final node here, you can see we have three groups. Now we have collision group, wood group, and outline group. And that's perfect for us because we can use this outline group and this wood group for our material assignments. So now to start to set up materials that can be read by Unity, what we need to do is drop down a new attribute create node. And we'll just plop that into the end of this graph here. And I'm going to call this the wood mat for wood material. All right, so this wood material, or this attribute node, is going to assign the materials to the proper mesh groups. All righty. So I'm going to assign this to the wood group. All right. And now what we need to do is set up two attributes. Okay. Now these attributes need to have associated names and now these names can be found inside of unity if you open up the houdini engine settings window go to materials you can see that here are the attribute names so we need unity material first okay so this is going to be that first attribute here i'm going to create a new material and actually i mean a new attribute and actually make this the first one and now this particular attribute needs to be of type string okay because it's a name they both need to be strings because we need to provide Unity with a path to a material. And these names will allow us to access those paths. All right. So we'll come back here inside of Unity. I'm going to grab the second one, the Unity submaterial name, and put that in for the second attribute here. Because what we need to do is I need to give, for the Unity material, I need to give the name of the whole substance. So in that case, this is video ramp. Okay, so that's the name of that whole substance. All right, <clears throat> and then the submaterial name is one of those materials or one of those substances inside of that sub that package, that substance package. So that would be ramp plywood. That's the name that we want to use for the wood material. So with that set up, we actually have material assignments now. So now the wood group inside of Houdini will be given this ramp plywood material when we import it into Unity. The last thing that we really need to do though is we actually need to give our whole object UVs because we haven't done that yet. So let's do a really quick UV of this. Nothing fancy. We're just going to do a UV unwrap. All right. So we're going to feed in that final geometry to UV unwrap. All righty. And what we can do is we can check it with a UV quick shade. So I'm going to drop in a UV quick shade node. And bam, we have UVs for each side. <clears throat> Alrighty, so everything's looking all perfect. All we need to do now is get rid of our UV quick shade and take the final output of our UV'd model and pass that into our clipping system. So now, now, now we have UVs for our render geometry and we don't need them for our collision mesh. All right, so there we go. So now we have UVs all set up. I want to create one more attribute. Now this will be the outline material. So outline mat. Alrighty, so we have to do that same process. We need two string attributes here inside of Houdini. So both these guys need to be string and string. And we'll go back to Unity and we'll get those names. So the first string needs to be the Unity material or the substance, the main substance package. And the submaterial has to be one of those substances inside of that substance package. So this one is the first one because the substance package is called video ramp. And then we need outline color for our submaterial. So it's outline color. Alrighty. So that is how you get materials all set up. So let's actually check our work here now. So I'm going to put the display flag on the final node here. That way we get all these material assignments also included in our 
procedural asset that we've created. All right, and I'm gonna save my scene. I'm gonna jump back up and I'm gonna, I need to save my OTL. So I go to save operator type. All right, and then we can match current definition and you'll notice everything is still around. So we've saved this definition. So now what we can do, so I'm gonna jump back to Unity here. We don't need that up anymore. So what I wanna do is actually overwrite this simple ramp or the Gatu simple ramp uh, file. So I need to show that in ex Explorer here. Alrighty. So I need to do that and go to scanned, place that over there. And what I wanna do is um, also load up the desktop so I can get to the new OTL that I just saved. So there's going to be my Gatu simple ramp here. I'm gonna save that over it, say replace. That's good. So when I come back into Unity, it will recompile. So now if I were to rebuild this procedural asset, you'll notice that we are now using substances here. <clears throat> At least we should be. And let's go actually into our video ramp here and let's change the color. Oh, I didn't actually expose that. So it looks like we are missing an assignment to the um, outline color. And that is because we didn't actually specify a group. So if I come back here into Houdini, let me allow editing of contents again. So in our outline mat material here, what happened was we didn't actually specify the group of geometry that this should actually control. We did for the wood group, but because this node is sitting at the end of our graph here, it's overriding this wood mat. So what I need to do is make sure that we assign it to the proper group. So now that I've done that group assignment there, I can save my OTL again. I can come back to my folders and I wanna copy that new OTL over and just replace it. Go back into Unity, let it recompile there, and we'll rebuild. And you'll notice now we actually have wood assigned to the proper portions. And we can now select our ramp plywood material here. Alrighty. And we can start to change some of those values. So now we have procedural materials applied to a procedural object so I can change the width of this. And you'll notice that the UVs are being generated for us on the fly. So now we have our collision mesh being generated. We have our object being generated. We have procedural materials. We have procedural uh, UVs. So really what we've done is we've bundled up a full dynamic object into a single interface so that it can be used over and over again because you, you can make copies of this and make it a little bit different. Maybe a little bit longer. It's a little bit higher. And each one will have its own procedurally generated collision mesh and UVs and so on and so forth. All right. So that is basically the process of creating material assignments for your Houdini procedural assets. Thanks so much.